Welcome back to episode two of uh, our, the farm show from the Prairie Livestock Expo, brought to you by NetSet Communications. And today I'm visiting with uh, a chairman, and having been involved in this business for some 47 years, I've talked to a few chairmen of various organizations, especially of the hog industry. And of course, uh, this one is the Manitoba Pork Council, George Matheson. Tell me, I think you're, you're still a producer. I am. Uh, my farm's at Stonewall and uh, been in production since 1982, so time is moving on. So what happens to the farm when you're chairman of Manitoba Pork? Well, I have a brother and a nephew, his son, who I farm with, and uh, livestock, of course, is a 365-day job, and uh, they will look after things when I'm away, so it's, it's worked out well over the years. So has been, you know, being chairman of Manitoba Pork, uh, is it what you thought it would be or tell me well I would say for the most part yes uh, I had been a director for um, nine years prior to that uh, Carl Kynock was my predecessor as chair of the board uh, so I had a pretty good idea for the most part what went on but until you actually sit in that chair you don't know everything about being uh, the chair of Manitoba Pork so uh, yeah there has been a bit of learning as well but the, the curve has been very gentle and very kind to me let's say so and working with the kind of staff you have and especially I just finished talking the earlier with Andrew Dixon and of course he's been around forever and a day as far as the agricultural industry but that that helps so what are some of the things that that you see right now as the key challenges for the pork industry well uh, biosecurity and the threat of uh, hog diseases you know North America and throughout the world uh, is a, a challenge we uh, constantly confront and we have to uh, keep uh, keep our guard up uh, we've uh, done a very good job I feel managing PED which had been devastating to the North American uh, hog population 2014 the one on the horizon now is African swine fever which would, could be even more serious of course being a foreign animal disease if it uh, came into North America so uh, that uh, biosecurity as I mentioned is very concerning uh, also, um, uh, the, the construction of new hog barns to make sure that our, our plants in Manitoba are as full uh, to capacity as possible uh, is another thing that we're trying to assist producers with. And um, public affairs uh, is always ongoing uh, to educate the public as far as uh, nutritional value and sustainability of our industry, animal care, workplace health and safety, uh, there are issues that we'll, we will always be dealing with, but uh, yeah, uh, new barns and, um, and biosecurity, uh, the future of those are probably the ones we focus on with most importance for now. I remember back when we used to build barns and you'd come into these meetings and you would have confrontations and things weren't, weren't fun. You know, in fact, I believe some producers probably said, you know what, if that's what I have to go through, then I'm not going to even get involved. But you formed a, a corporation within Manitoba Pork, right. which uh, I, I've seen it and I've written articles about it, mm -hmm. that to me is, is really bang on. Yeah, yeah, I think it's assisted the uh, producers who are interested in expanding a great deal. Permitting processing uh, is still very complex and uh, also the, the conditional use hearing can be trying for a producer. So giving them the, the proper information, the proper preparation for these things has been uh, of great assistance to them. And uh, it's one of those things that the staff foresaw as a need that the producers of Manitoba uh, would have and uh, they were uh, right on and uh, it's been very, very valuable and will continue to be so for the next few years. I think so there were some questions at, uh, at some meetings where you know why did you do with that corporation what you did i think it's it's part of manitoba pork right mm -hmm. the exact uh, specifications of it uh, you know as an entity just outside of uh, the jurisdiction of manitoba pork 
I'm not quite sure if I've left that to uh, the, the staff, uh, more specifically Andrew Dixon, our general manager, and our lawyers, but it needed to be a corporation uh, to financed by uh, <coughs> uh, Manitoba Pork, but in the end, uh, user fees uh, applied so that uh, in the end it will be a zero-sum uh, uh, budget uh, come year-end. That's uh, that was the thing that that struck me, you know, that that it's actually a user pay. Yeah, yeah, and uh, which is good, you know, because not all producers, of course, are building new barns. It's a valuable service, but it's just one of those things where, hey, if you need it, it's there. It will cost, but at the same time, it will be of great value to you. So, how long do you foresee yourself being as chairman of Manitoba Pork. And well, uh, I'm up for uh, re-election every year. It's a one-year term. Uh, I'll be 62 in June. Uh, 65 seems to be the number when a lot of people retire, and right now that is my idea of when. Uh, that would bring me to seven years uh, as chair of Manitoba Pork, which I think would be plenty for, for myself and plenty for the board, and uh, a change is always good. So, But as I said, I'm up for re-election every year, so you just never know. Thank you very much. Uh, today, that was uh, George Matheson, a hog producer and also chair of uh, the Manitoba Pork Council. And as I said at the outset of this, it's, it's a real pleasure for me to visit with real producers that are actually running the affairs for other producers. And, and it takes a commitment. It takes a commitment on behalf of people like George in order to do so. So once again, uh, it's, uh, it's great to be here at the Prairie Livestock Expo. We will be back. Uh, NetSec Communications is a sponsor of this segment, but we'll hear these commercials and we'll be back with more.